Hey, welcome to Whitefields Community Church Sermon Extra. It's good to have you with us once again this week. I'm here with Pastor Nick, who is the pastor of Whitefields Community Church, and we have started a new series, and the series is called I Could Never Believe in a God Who, and uh, we're going to finish that sentence through the next uh, few weeks as we we look through various topics, and uh, basically the idea was that you put out a poll that and ask people to finish that sentence for you and they came back with various uh, titles various ways to finish that sentence and i could not believe in a god who and uh, this week we're going to look at the topic of i could not believe in a god who suppresses uh, women and minorities and of course it's definitely uh, a, a very big topic touchy sub- subject to to get into you know even within the walls of the church and uh, one of the one of the unique perspectives that you brought to your sermon on Sunday was just the idea of looking at authority within our society and within the church through the eyes of the Trinity. And uh, you, know, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so part of this uh, idea of being created in the image of God, this is one of the first concepts that's introduced to us in the entire Bible, right? Like in the beginning was God and God created the, the world. And um, in the beginning, God created everything. And then it says that uh, at the pinnacle of his creation, he created humanity, he, mankind. And it says male and female, he created them. And it says that in his own image, he created them. Now, what that phrase means is uh, one of those things that you can kind of explore and think about. And one of the things it means is it means that what we know about God, then we are created in his image in a certain way. We reflect certain characteristics he has uh, that are unique to us as human beings uh, that other creatures in the created world do not have. One of the ways, though, is that if God is triune in nature, then perhaps we are created to reflect his triune nature and that we are created in the image of a triune God. And what's interesting about that is two things. One is that it means that God is by nature a community, right? He's a community. Uh, and, you know, we remember the words of the Athanasian Creed, which is something that um, our community groups are going through this week uh, for those who follow the guide. And the Athanasian Creed really laid out, okay, what do Christians believe the Bible says about the Trinity? And this is really kind of the kind of plumb line for nowadays, our our beliefs about the Trinity. This is something that was set, you know, in the first couple hundred years of the church. And it says that, uh, you know, we believe in one God, who eternally exists in three co-equal persons uh, without any kind of mixing of those persons, right? So they're unique persons and they're co-equal, they're co-eternal. And so that's interesting. So that speaks of value, that each of the persons of the Trinity has equal value. They are uh, equal in value. Yeah, I guess, uh, what am I trying to say? Substance, you know, was a word that the early church used. They're equal in substance. They are all God. And they're all actually called God in different places in the Bible. And then it gets into another interesting thing is this, that when you consider, though, the work of God, um, this is called the economic trinity in uh, theological terms as opposed to the imminent trinity. The imminent trinity is God in his nature. So this is who God is. But the economic trinity is how does the trinity work together when it comes to the uh, work of God in the world? So, for example, saving us. How does and, and here's what we see throughout the Bible is that there's a there are different roles that they play, right? So, uh, for example, the role of the Holy Spirit. One of the roles is in our sanctification. That's a unique role of the Holy Spirit. The indwelling work of the Holy Spirit is a unique aspect of that. Um, you see, Jesus obviously was came and he had a unique role in the salvific or saving work of God in our lives. The Father had the role of sending and leading, right? So you just put in these terms. uh, The Father sends, the Son goes and obeys and glorifies the Father. The Father then glorifies the Son. The Son and the Father together send the Spirit. The Spirit uh, glorifies the Son and glorifies the Father. And there's this reciprocal relationship of glorifying each other Um, and loving each other, but yet they have different roles. And that's important when it comes to thinking about how we function as humanity. What it means is that uh, men and women, for example, are unique. Uh, They're equal, but they're unique. And some people push back against that. They say, you know, if they're truly equal, well, then we should get rid of all the uniqueness. But again, it's inherent to the nature of God that you can be equal and yet have unique roles. 
Yeah, no, I think that's one of very, very important. I think when when even looking at any topic or any questions we come to the Bible is to, to study the nature and the character of who God is. I think, you know, and understanding the Trinity and, and, and studying that can, and really being able to view and filter our theology or our questions through that understanding of who God is and just really dive and can answer a lot of these questions that, that pop up in the Bible. But we also talked about, you know, just what about, you know, the value, the innate value in people when we look at, you know, society, how they view, you know, handicapped people or how they view the elderly or how they view the unborn. You also had some thoughts on that. Yeah, when it comes to, I mean, uh, clearly one is race, right? So historically, uh, one of the actually really bad markers of, um, you know, humanism in a sense in the way it's been practiced in the last several hundred years since the Enlightenment is that, um, you know, we saw this really, really prominently in the 20th century with the Nazis and the fascist movements and even with uh, parts of the communist movements was that, um, you know, certain people were valued more than other people. You saw that in the way that they were even treated legally. I mean, even in the United States. I mean, let's be honest about our own history, right? Like, uh, slaves were not given the right to vote. They weren't given uh, basic human rights. They were not treated as equal persons with free persons, right? And so you had people being treated with different levels of value. And again, that goes completely against this idea that we're created in the image of God. And our value is based on the fact that we're created by God and we bear his image. And James talks about that. He says, you know, with your tongue, you bless God and you curse a person who bears the image of God. And he says it shouldn't be. In other words, even in the New Testament, it's linked to this idea that we bear the image of God, therefore we have intrinsic value. And uh, I think the implications that are huge Uh, for people like with disabilities. Does a person with disabilities who, let's say they have a cognitive disability or a physical disability, which prevents them from being able to contribute anything, right? For their whole life, they will need to be cared for, let's say. Let's say an elderly person who's no longer able to do anything and totally needs 24-hour care. Uh, Why not just save ourselves the money and end that person's life? But then maybe we should do that. I mean, that gives us the right to do that with, let's say, babies. There's been a movement saying that if, a, you know, even after birth, until a child is able to take care of itself, um, then, you know, the parents have the right to end that child's life because they're responsible for its care. The Bible would say, no, 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 not at all. I mean, there, there have been cases where that very discussion has been had. Um, And, you know, as human beings, right, our gestation is nine months, but the time that it takes a child to be independent is quite a long time, right? Like Some 20-year-olds are probably not independent yet. Correct, (laughs) right. So, um, you know, at this point, we are now taking this into our own hands and saying that we get to determine how much value a person's life has based on their ability to contribute, their ability to be self-sufficient, all of these things. And, I mean, this gets into issues of, like, you know, this was practiced by the Nazis, literally. Like, mm-hmm. um, like who are we going to kill? Who is a drain on our society? And Christianity pushes completely against that. Not just Christianity, I mean the Bible. Judeo-Christianity pushes against that and says, no, every person has value, even if they require 24-hour care, even if they're a drain economically, they have value as a human being because they're created in the image of God. And that means that people of all races have equal value. That's really important. Um, You know, I think that's something we take for granted nowadays. Um, But that's something that, again, that is a teaching which comes from the Bible. You know, I found some interesting statistics uh, saying that, um, you know, the most likely person to be a Christian in the entire world is uh, are women of color, right? There are more women of color who are Christians than any other demographic of Christianity. So the idea that now we here in America, it's very easy for us to think that Christianity is a Western uh, religion, you know, um, Anglo-Saxon thing, and it is not at all. It is an Asian uh, origin religion, uh, and the majority of followers of Christianity around the world are people of color, and even amongst them, um, women of color. Yeah, and probably what led to that was the fact that Christianity in its 
early days in the early church embraced all cultures, slaves yeah. and women, um, people from high-born to low-born across, across the cultures and across the nations. But talking about statistics, just to kind of maybe a window into your process, somebody asked you about a particular statistic that you had on Sunday, and, and you can share that, st- uh, that, that statistic, but where do you kind of get your statistics from when you, you're looking into things like this? Yeah, I get them from a number of sources. This one in particular I mentioned was that um, I mentioned a statistic I read and the, where I got it, I got it from an Australian news source, but a mainstream news source. It was, I think it's ABC, Australian Broadcasting Company. Mm-hmm. And they had done a thing on evangelicalism in Australia and the dark side of evangelicalism, mm-hmm. which they said that, you know, the Bible in a way by telling wives to submit to their husbands, which if you want more on that, please listen to the, the uh, sermon because I explain that in some detail. But uh, they said, you know, that some evangelical people use that as a justification for spousal abuse Mm -hmm. or abusing girlfriends, men abusing girlfriends. And this is what statistic, they quote an American statistic uh, and they gave references and everything that showed that the most likely person to beat their wife or girlfriend in the United States is a self-proclaiming evangelical who doesn't go to church. Conversely, uh, evangelical who does go to church every week is one of the least likely people to do that. And so those statistics require interpretation, but that's where I got the statistics from in that case. Uh, lately, I've been reading some really good books that include a lot of statistics. Uh, they always give references. I've been reading a book that really, I really recommend called Confronting Christianity by Re- Rebecca McLaughlin. It just came out through Crossway Publishing excellent book. I recommend everyone read it. Um, but she quotes a lot from Pew Research, uh, mostly Pew, um, mm-hmm. which is, uh, you know, a non-aligned, non-partisan uh, research company. So Pew Research is, is where I get a lot of statistics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is going to be a really interesting um, set of topics that we're going to be covering the next uh, few weeks. And so I'm, I hope you're excited about getting to some of these. And, and uh, you know, let us know. Comment on this video and let us know your comments or even maybe some other topics that you think we should cover regarding that phrase, you know, I could not believe in a God who you know, dot, dot, dot. So uh, we have, we still got many weeks to go, a lot of topics. We hope you stay tuned. If you missed Sunday's uh, sermon, whitefieldschurch.com, you're going to find it up there. I encourage you to download it, share share it with your friends, and uh, we hope to see you again. God bless.